Hey everyone, and welcome back to our electronics tutorial series. My name is Aaron from AX Electronic, and today we are going to learn how to include diodes in our LT SPICE simulations. So for those of you who may not know, LT SPICE is a very powerful circuit simulation tool. A few videos ago, we learned how to use op amps in them. In our circuit analysis lecture series, we learned how to use resistors, capacitors, inductors, voltage sources, all sorts of cool stuff. But today, we are going to learn how to include diodes, and then we're also going to learn a little bit more about diodes too along the way. So I'm going to go ahead and hop out of your way. I've got my LT SPICE window all opened up and ready to go. Now, the first thing that I'm going to add is that I'm going to go ahead and add our diode. And I can do that a couple of ways. So up here, there's a, or there's a sign that says diode, or you can just press D. Okay. Now, I want to rotate it. So I'm going to rotate it towards looking this way. I'm just going to click it, leave it there. Now, the default, the default diode is just an ideal diode. Okay. So it has a couple of couple of strange characteristics but diodes are actually fairly simple so I like to actually pick a pretty simple one this 1N914 so this one actually has the spice model for it it's gonna be a little bit more realistic compared to the ideal diode that it usually gives us so what we're gonna do is that we are going to measure this IV curve using LT spice so I went ahead and oops excuse me I went ahead and dropped in a ground here and I am going to connect this ground to the end of my diode and I'm connecting it to the end of the diode with that line because remember diodes only let current flow one direction so I want current to flow this in this direction to ground now the next thing we need is a voltage source so press F2 type in volt and hit enter that will give you a voltage source oops don't need two. press F9 to undo I'm gonna add a ground to this voltage source and I'm gonna press F3 to wire these up Great, so now we've got our voltage source connected to our diode. Now, what we wanna do is that we wanna actually sweep this voltage source. So if you remember, the IV curves that we saw before had voltage on our X axis. So we want our, or we want our voltage to be swept across a range. So that's what we're gonna do, and I'm gonna show you how to do that. Right now, we can just leave this blank, and we can just go ahead and hit run up here. So if we hit run, instead of doing a transient analysis, which is versus time, so time will be our X axis, we're gonna do a DC sweep. So it's asking for the name of the first source to sweep. Mine is V1, so I'm just going to type in V1. Okay, so that's the name. It's going to ask for a type of sweep, so we can do linear, octave, decade, or list. Let's just do linear. Start value. So our start value is where we're going to start this sweep. It's going to be our lower bound. I'm going to do minus 3 volts, okay, because we want to see a little bit of that reverse direction too. And our stop value, let's just make it 1 volt. For our increment, I'm going to do something a little bit smaller, 1 millivolt. So if I hit enter, it's going to start our simulation. And what did I not define? Let's see, missing value, unknown parameter V. Okay, so it doesn't know this parameter here. So if you right click, and just hit OK, it should disappear because it just had a V there previously. We're just going to get rid of that and hit OK. So now if we try it one more time, now we don't get any errors. Great. So if we measure the voltage right here, it of course is going to be directly proportional to our sweep because this is the voltage or this is the excuse me this is the voltage that we are sweeping but if we take a look at the current so if we go right here on our diode a little current probe will pop up and it'll point us in the direction of the current if we click the current here we can see that <clears throat> at this point we start off very very small probably zero current just about and then as we increase Especially once we get past this 0.7, our current starts to increase considerably. So from 0.6 to 1 volt, we're already up to 270 milliamps. If we make this an even wider sweep, so let's say we go to 3 volts instead. So I right click on that command, change stop value to 3 volts. Let's see what happens here. Right, so now you can see we're all the way up into 3.2, 3.6 amps. So there's a ton of current flowing through this diode right now. So this is only with three volts. So if we try to connect this to our Arduino that outputs five volts, let's try it out. If we add five volts here and we try and run this simulation, we're going to expect about seven amps and our Arduino just can't provide that. So what we need to kind of protect our diode is that current limiting resistor. So I'm gonna get rid of this ground and this wire. I'm gonna press R, that's gonna bring up a resistor. And I'm just gonna connect ground to the bottom and get everything all wired up. Now we need to tell the value of this resistance. So I'm gonna start with something like 100 ohms, okay? 
So something like 100 ohms. And now let's run the simulation. Okay, so now that we've run the simulation, we can see that it starts to increase its current at about the same point, okay? And now, all the way up at five volts, we're only pushing 40 milliamps. Okay, so we're just a little bit above 40 milliamps. So this is a whole lot better. This is protecting our diode, this is protecting our voltage source, and protecting everything downstream from that huge overcurrent. Now, if we measure this voltage, it's again, still that same sweep. If we measure the voltage on this resistor, it also starts to increase whenever this diode voltage or whenever this diode begins conducting. Now, if we do something a little bit different, so I'm gonna go ahead, come up here, press delete, and get rid of this voltage. Press escape to get out of that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down here, I'm gonna click and hold that red probe on one side. I'm gonna drag this other side to the other side. So this is like we're probing across that diode. And what we can see is that in the very beginning, in the negative section, we start off with this negative voltage. So it's almost linear. That's what we're expecting because it's, it's blocking all that current. Now, once we get to this area where it says zero volts, it's gonna continue going up and then it kind of levels off at about 0.7 or 0.8 volts, okay? So as it begins conducting a little bit more current, that voltage drop is gonna change, but it still stays fairly constant. So that's why we say that these diodes have an almost constant voltage drop across them of about 0.7 volts in this case. Okay, so let's go back a little bit. So we've already seen how the diode works in the forward direction using LT Spice. Let's go back a little bit and see how it works in the negative direction. Okay, so I'm gonna get rid of this resistor, put our ground there again, and if we simulate, and look at this current, we can see we're right back where we were. So we've got seven amps whenever we're at five volts. But let's extend, oops, let's extend this sweep out a little bit more. So instead of going from negative three to five, Let's go from negative 100 to 100, okay? So this is a big wide range and we can maybe see if it breaks down whenever we go too far negative. So let's give it a shot. Okay, so maybe we're not quite at breakdown yet. Let's try it a little bit more. Let's try negative 1000 to 1000. Let's change that increment to just be one volt. Okay. So we haven't quite, we haven't reached that breakdown yet, and that probably is because of the spice model. So maybe they didn't, they didn't account for that there. But as this increases, especially if you look at the data sheet, it can't always block that reverse current because this diode is a little bit fragile. So if we try and apply, or if we uh, apply too much reverse voltage, this diode could definitely easily break. Okay, but this must not have been accounted for in the spice model. But you can see that as we increase to a thousand, we've got uh, about 1.7 kiloamps, which is quite a bit. So definitely not realistic. <laughs> so let's go back to our normal minus three to five and take a look. Okay, so we can see that in this normal range that we might work in, that it's going to block the current going in the reverse direction. And in the forward direction, it is going to allow that current to flow, although it does act like a short circuit. So we do need those current limiting resistors in all of our future circuits. So this is all I have for you guys because I wanted to start off basic, but throughout these next few videos on diodes, I want you guys to try simulating them, see if you can get them to work, and then start probing around, seeing how everything looks, see if maybe those diodes have that same voltage drop, or if they start changing, whether there's more current, uh, different, different conditions, or if you use a different diode, if they behave differently. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. I'm happy to answer them. Other than that, if you like this content, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. It keeps me very highly motivated, and I will see you guys next time.